In July last year, we got our first look at Far Cry 6, and that was a dramatic cinematic trailer, some screenshots and basic information about the game. However, today, finally, we get to see some of that juicy gameplay and learn more about what this massive game has in store for us. There's a lot to take in here. A big thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this one and letting me have a peek at the game early. Now, for those not familiar with Far Cry 6, this time around it's set in the tropical nation of Yara, an island deep in the heart of the Caribbean that's not so loosely based on Cuba. It's quite different from Hope County though, the fictional region of Montana from Far Cry 5, and it's also a return to a tropical setting. According to Ubisoft, it's their most ambitious world yet, and they want you to feel like you're really exploring an entire country with jungles, beaches, villages, towns, swamps, and of course, the capital city, the game's first built-up urban environment. And you can, of course, expect plenty of wildlife too. In this game, you play as Danny Rojas, a guerrilla fighter born in the country's capital city of Esperanza. You can customize Danny at the beginning of the game with two different character models available, male or female, both with their own voice acting and you're part of a revolution against Yara's ruler and dictator Anton Castillo, played by none other than Giancarlo Esposito, and the cutscenes do look fantastic. Anton has been in power for 50 years and the island has been cut off from the world after a violent revolution. And this plays into the story of the game because the country itself is essentially isolated and frozen in time, and this is shown in the architecture, weaponry and vehicles around the place. Anton is determined to return Yara back to its former glory, but in doing so, he's clamped down on most of the freedoms of the people, issued brutal social reforms, and anyone who speaks out against him is forced into labour camps. One person alone is not a revolution though, although it can be the spark, and you're going to need some friends to help you out. Clara Garcia is the friend of Libertad, a revolutionary group fighting back against Anton Castillo, and she's the main protagonist that you work with. And then her mentor Juan Cortez also happens to be a guerrilla master and a master of invention and he will provide you with all of the weapons that you could ever need. Speaking of which, let's talk about guns. First of all, Far Cry 6 has the biggest roster of weapons in any Far Cry game with 49 military grade weapons. Now because of the era and the country of Yara being lost in time, you should expect modern weapons but also older generation guns from the revolution and earlier wars. LMGs, sniper rifles, assault rifles, you name it. There's also armor piercing rounds that will help kill enemies who are wearing helmets and explosive arrows to go with the compound bow. At the core of the game though is a system called Resolver. This applies to other parts of the game too, but it's most apparent when it comes to the weapons. Resolver is a real life philosophy from Cuba and it means to solve and it's all about using resourcefulness and creativity to get things done. In Yara, because the island has been cut off for decades, people have become used to making do with what they have and making the most of it. This means you're going to be able to make use of some very wild and wacky weapons, scavenging sardine cans, car batteries, old motorcycle engines, car mufflers, you name it. It could be used as a weapon and it makes for some very different combinations. It's not just the weapons themselves either, it also includes attachments such as scopes. You're going to be able to add suppressors, sights, different magazines, laser pointers and while some of them will be military grade, there will also be resolver versions of them too. And alongside all of the impressive weaponry, you're going to have a few gadgets at your disposal. Throwing knives will be great for silent and stealthy kills. EMP grenades are brilliant at taking out cameras and alarms. And of course, baseballs for nothing other than hitting enemies in the head to distract them before you take them down. You can also customize all of your gear and perks are tied directly to the gear this time. You can change your headgear, chest, hands, legs, feet. By changing up different pieces of gear, you'll find ways to complement your playstyle. For example, marksman goggles will improve headshot damage, being incredibly useful if you want to snipe at a long distance or you're accurate. And vest pants and shoes can give you stuff like improved stealth and mobility and gloves can improve accuracy with throwing knives. There's a lot of customization in this game. You also get something called Supremo backpacks, something new to the series. These are very much in line with the Resolver philosophy. The backpacks come with a special ability like the Exterminator pack, which is an insane looking artillery strike just sitting there waiting on your back. These can be really useful if you've sounded an alarm or you're in trouble. They can then blow up any reinforcement at range and there are others that you can choose from too, all have Having unique attacks. Now artillery backpacks are cool and all but do you know what would be really cool? A pet crocodile called Guapo that can attack people for you. Thankfully you're in luck because that's exactly what you're getting. Thanks for Hire is back in Far Cry 6 but this time they're called Amigos for Hire. You may have already seen the little wiener dog in a wheelchair called Chorizo. He's one of the Amigos that you can call on but Guapo is a very different ally. As you can imagine He's great in the water and really useful in swampy areas of the map. And well, it's just funny. 
insane, hilarious setting a crocodile on an unsuspecting enemy. So you've got your guns, you've got your pet crocodile, but you're going to need some wheels. In Far Cry 6, you can travel by land, sea or air, although air could be a bit more tricky to begin with and I'll explain why in a minute. In Far Cry 6, players will now have their very own ride and it'll be customizable inside and out and you can have it delivered pretty much anywhere around the world. The Resolver theme carries across to the vehicles as well, so expect turrets, plows, countermeasures and plenty of other customization options for your wheels. And there are horses too, if you want to be old school. Getting around the world isn't going to be entirely straightforward though, Anton has the country under a very strict ruling and the capital city of Esperanza is under martial law. Speaking of which, this capital city is a huge sprawling urban environment, something quite different for Far Cry 6 and that brings with it some very interesting unique verticality in the gameplay. It's going to be really interesting to see how well you can traverse through the city and the rest of the world. The roads themselves are controlled by checkpoints and Anton has flat cannons controlling the air. These play a part of the story and you are able to take control of the checkpoints too, fighting your way through to overrun them. And this will make traveling by road easier. And yes, destroying the flat cannons one by one will enable you to fly uncontested. They are in military areas all over the island though, so it could take some work. Outposts are back too called FND bases. The military has just taken over everything here. Schools, museums, TV stations, farms. There's a ton of locations that used to belong to citizens of Yara and you can fight through them, capture them all and try to return them to the people. This isn't the first revolution here though. There was one back in 1917 and thanks to that there was a sprawling network of hidden paths that Libertad and yourself can use to get around the country. Underground locations, hidden jungle routes all can be used if you want to get around and avoid trouble. They can also get you new gear and intel. But if you do want to risk it in plain sight, Far Cry 6 has a new feature that lets players holster their weapons and this lets you interact in the world without being pestered by soldiers constantly. Get too close though or enter a restricted area and you're going to be in trouble. So wrapping things up today, it looks like Far Cry 6 is shaping up to be a really fun experience. The world itself is incredibly detailed and varied and it seems that there's a ton of customization in the game from the guns, the gear and the vehicles to really allow you to have some fun and epic moments. As soon as I can get that crocodile though, Guapo, I think that's all I might do. And while the game is telling a pretty serious dark story, it will be allowing you to have fun along the way. And that's all guys, thank you so much for watching. Do let me know your thoughts on Far Cry 6 down in the comments below. What are you feeling so far now we've seen some gameplay and learnt about it some more. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.